Kia ora, year at 11 and 12. This is the third video that I'm doing from today's lesson for the people who've been away sick. Um, and it's a partial fractions question. There's nothing too complicated about it, but you can see that it's worth a whopping 10 marks, which means it's probably got quite a lot of different problem solving stuff in it. And it has. So the first thing we have to do is to look at this expression here and express it in partial fractions. And then we have to show that this integral can be simplified into 8 minus log 9. So apart from the partial fraction stuff, here are some things that we've got in this question. So we've got a wee bit of chain rule, and then we've got a whole lot of log rules. I actually think it's on the easy side for a 10 marker, but it's really, really nice practice, and it's very easy to go wrong when you first see that expression that you've got to work with. So let's go onto a nice clean page and have a look. Okay, so remember that we have different ways to break partial fractions up. And we need to think about it before we start. And the very first thing to do each time you do a partial fractions thing is to look at this, look at the order of the numerator, and look at the order of the denominator. And here they're the same, right? They're both order two, we've got two quadratics. So before we, we start doing any partial fractions, we're going to um, take out a whole number first. So let's have a look at what we mean. So we've got 4x squared plus 5x plus 3. I know some of you will be quickly fast forwarding through this because you remembered this already, and that's great. Now let's write the denominator. We want to see how many whole multiples of this we've got in the top line. So we're looking at this 4x squared and we're saying, well, we've got two lots of all of this, and then we have to do some adjustments. So 2 times this. Now what? Well, we've got 4x squared, but now we've got plus 10x from the 5 times the 2, and we just want plus 5x, so it's going to be minus 5x. Um, and here, we want to have plus 3, but we've got plus 4. So we need to take away 1. But you can see that that big expression has already simplified down to give me this. I've got 2 minus, and then I'll put this in brackets, 5x plus 1 over 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. So this is the bit that we're going to do partial fractions on. So we're going to factorise the bottom line. Now we're factorising a quadratic where a is not equal to 1, but it's a very easy one because it's got all pluses. Gosh, I don't think I can do much more colouring in here. Let's see, so it's going to be plus, plus. We want the numbers that add to 5, multiply to 2. And now we're ready to go. And we've got our simple partial fractions pattern where we're going to have 2x plus 1 here and x plus 2 here. And we just need a constant for each of those. Now, if this part isn't feeling really easy by this point in the year, then please send me an email and we'll make a time to sit down and go through it together. Right, we're going to substitute in x equals negative 2. And that will give me negative 10 plus 1 is equal to 0 plus b times negative 4 plus 1. So negative 9 equals negative 3b. B is equal to 3. Now I could do the other bit by substituting a negative a half, but I'm hoping that also by this point in the year you will have seen an easier way to do this, and that's to do matching up. So here we've got 5x, and that has to equal ax plus 6x, right, because now we know that b is equal to 3. So that gives me straight away a is equal to negative 1. And that's a much faster, more efficient strategy than going back and substituting in the value that will give me 0 here. But either will work. Okay, so where do I get to now? Well, I've got, um, let's write it out properly, 5x plus 1 over this, 2x plus 1 times x plus 2. I can hear people turning off their laptops as I go slowly, but there you go. So we've got negative 1 over 2x plus 1, plus what was b? b was 3. 3 over x plus 2. Finally, we're ready to integrate. So my integral 
will look like this. We're finding the integral from 4 to 0. So let's do it properly and write out what we started with. Oops, dx is equal to this integral. So we've got 2 plus 1 over 2x plus 1 minus 3 over x plus 2 dx. So we've done all the hard work. This needs a big bracket around it. If there's any strangers out there watching thinking how bad my writing is, my board writing is nearly this bad, but my work solution writing is better. Now, this is 2x. Here, we just have to be careful that um, the antiderivative is the log of 2x plus 1, but by the chain rule, I end up with a 2 when I differentiate. So I have to multiply by a half. And here we've got 3 log of x plus 2 between 4 and 0. Substituting in gives me 8 plus a half log 2 fours are 8 plus 1 is 9, minus 3 log 6, minus 0, plus a half log 1, minus 3 log 2, which gives me 8, plus this, I'm going to, I'll leave it how it is, a half log 9, minus 3 log 6, this is 0, this is 0, plus 3 log 2. Now at this point it's time to go right back to the question and see what are we trying to show because we're just about there. So we're trying to show that this equals 8 minus log 9 and we've already got plus a half of log 9. There's not much we can do with that. A good strategy often is to break sixes and nines down into their smallest power. Now I'm not going to do that here because um, I know I want to end up with a log nine. I could do that and I'll, I'll get there just by a different path. But here we've got this. Now what can I do with the log of six? That's log of two times three. So we've got eight plus a half log nine minus three log two plus 3 log 3, plus 3 log 2. And you can see that this and this are going to disappear to 0. I've got 8 plus a half log 9 minus 3 log 3. So now actually I am going to change this back into a 3 after all this. Um, half log 9 is log of 9 to the 1 half, which is this. That leaves me with 8 plus 1 lot of log 3 minus 3, so 8 minus 2 log 3, which is equal to 8 minus the log of 3 squared, which is 8 minus the natural log of 9 as required. So there you go, um, 10 marks in the bag. Uh, nothing too bad as long as you remembered that initial partial fractions set up. Um, so it's one of those questions where I think most candidates probably would have got close to full marks or not many marks at all. Hopefully you'll be one of the ones who got close to full marks.